Spirituality without action is fruitless, and social action without spirituality is heartless. We are boldly political without being partisan. Having a partisan-free place to stand liberates the religious patriot to see clearly, speak courageously, and act daringly. At this time, I have the honor to present to you the moral leader of our nation. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Dr. King, if he were alive today, would be on the side of justice. He would be on the side of LGBT justice and advocating for marriage equality as a civil right that all should enjoy. If we look at the civil rights movement carefully, so much of the momentum that sustained that movement was the momentum of letting God's justice come to the counter to the schoolhouse, into the center of society. That was people trying to put justice to work that, that Amos talks about, that Isaiah talks about, that Jesus talks about. Putting faith into action means living out one's theology and spirituality as you help to transform the world. At least for me, uh, Jewish tradition teaches that we must participate in the ideal of tikkun olam, which means to repair or heal the world. Those of us in the Abrahamic faiths, in, in Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, we have a prophetic tradition which says, uh, and I'll quote, I'll quote Hebrew scripture, Micah 6, 8, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? Do, love, and act. Those are verbs, those are action-based, and those are pro that's prophetic language. One of the most amazing uh, examples uh, comes from the 20th century. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel was one of uh, the great uh, contemporary theologians of the late 20th century. He marched with Dr. Martin Luther King and was one of the first rabbis to do so. Heschel was the white man with the prophet's beard, two to the right of Dr. King. That was the occasion on which Heschel said he felt he was praying with his legs. And that is the motto of putting faith into action. That it's not just about book learning, it's not just about theology, it's about taking action and being part of a movement of transformation. I said, when do we want it? Now! And what do we want? I said, what do we want? There's a whole world that is waiting for people of faith to act in a just and public way. There are people who are waiting to hear their own voices echoed, their feelings, their deep thoughts heard and articulated from the pulpit and from people of faith. Many of the great social justice movements have come out of religious tradition. And I believe that marriage equality can be advanced greatly by people of faith standing up saying, I believe that equality is orthodox and that morality is across the spectrum everyone's and that it's about integrity and fidelity and uh, responsibility and that people, everyone should have the same right to the same civil relationships and rights and privileges that everyone else has. Doing this work and, and being active on the, on the issue of marriage equality has deepened my faith. It has deepened my spiritual commitment to my community. It has made me want to be active in more ways. It has made me want to be a, a better Christian. It has made me want to do more service. I need to tell you that my life was transformed as a result of doing same-sex marriages here. And for people who want to say that my brothers and sisters 
who are engaging in same-sex marriages are not equal, I say, hell no, you are absolutely wrong. Our covenant with God is a living thing. It is renewed again in every generation. It is a sacred trust that we receive from our parents and we give to our children. Sexual preference and gender identity are irrelevant. God does not discriminate. When clergy step up and say, I am here on, you know, stand with my brothers and sisters, with my friends and neighbors, when I stand with the human family for equality because I believe that God has called us all to that, because I believe that equality is a part of God's will for everyone. That is very, very powerful. Clergy shrinking back away from equality for all is a devastating blow to equality. I began to take my role as a pastor more seriously uh, when a parishioner came to me after service one Sunday morning and said at the door, Pastor, that was a very nice sermon today, but I don't need a nice sermon. And if you're only going to preach nice sermons, I will go to another church because I need to be challenged. I need a pastor who's going to challenge me to be more socially active, a person who connects the front pages of the newspaper with the social gospel. He said, if you can't do that, I'll find a pastor who can. So I was pushed by a parishioner to move out of the safety and sanctity and serenity of the sanctuary into the streets and to begin from the pulpit, but also to take the stories in the Bible and apply them to everyday life. My daughter's best friend at school, that little girl has two moms. And during Prop 8, my daughter said to me, I'm worried about Bella's family. And that's the kind of empathy that I want my children to have. I want them to be thinking about the impact of all these political abstractions swirling around us. We have to remember that they impact individual people's lives. The point of my activism is to bring Christ's love into the public sphere, to bring the values of empathy and compassion and responsibility for each other, to bring that front and center, both in my personal life and in, our, in my public life. And I want them to be able to model that themselves. There are many ways that people can put their faith into action around marriage equality, including doing outreach and dialogue with others of their own faith tradition who might differ on the notion of marriage equality, learning about one another, learning why your faith calls you to work for marriage equality for people who are on the other side, as well as to hear their concerns, is a very important, important part of this marriage equality battle. I have determined that in order for me to have full integrity in standing with persons who love each other and have been denied the legal right to marry, I will not perform any marriage ceremony until that right is granted to all persons. We have dozens of people who have come here, joined the church, and are now very healthy, active, engaged, committed members, pledging, tithing, working all, all across the spectrum of our work. They came here because we took a strong social justice stand on equality, on marriage equality, and because they know that we've been blessing unions for decades and that we're not about to back away from that and we want, it, we want to move it to the next level of civil, of civil equality in terms of marriage. We have lots of people, not only gay people, but we have people whose family members are gay and lesbian, we have people whose children are gay and lesbian, we have people whose friends and um, siblings are gay and lesbian, who are straight themselves, who came because they want to be a part of a community that, that stands up for justice for all people, that proclaims marriage equality as a part of God's agenda for the human family. And they come and they stay and they work. And it's an amazing, it's an amazing experience. We are called upon to be an image of God. You see, God is absent, invisible. And the task of a human being is to represent the divine, to be a reminder of the presence of God. Once we become committed to becoming the face and hands of God to people, God provides that experience every single day, the opportunity every single day to be the face and hands of God to people who are in trouble or lost or excluded or suffering in any way. If we follow the guiding principle of Dr. King that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, 
it mandates that we speak out on behalf of the LGBT community. To our faith leaders, I must request, in fact demand, that we use our faith to affirm the dignity of all of humanity and not to oppress. This country has seen this go on for far too long. And if we do not pursue justice for the LGBT community, then we will not have justice for any community.